Good morning and welcome to our uh, third service out here in the uh, parking lot this morning. Uh, happy Father's Day to all fathers, grandfathers, uh, those who uh, provide care like a father to anybody uh, out there. A uh, special welcome to all watching on Facebook and will be watching on our, our YouTube uh, video service later. We begin with confession and forgiveness. We are gathered this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Since we were unable to be uh, in person together on Easter Sunday, I thought uh, once in a while uh, this summer when we're gathered together here, we could sing some Easter hymns because every, every Sunday actually is a day we celebrate the resurrection. So our opening hymn this morning is Jesus Christ has risen today. It's number 365 in the hymnal. Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Teach us, good Lord God, to serve you as you deserve, 
to give and not to count the cost, to fight and not to heed the wounds, to toil and not to seek for rest, to labor and not to ask for reward, except that of knowing that we do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Jeremiah. O Lord, you have enticed me, and I was enticed. You have overpowered me, and you have prevailed. I have become a laughingstock all day long. Everyone mocks me. For whenever I speak, I must cry out, I must shout, violence and destruction. For the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and a derision all day long. If I say, I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, then within me there is something like a burning fire shut up in my bones. I am weary with holding it in, and I cannot. For I hear many whispering, terror is all around. Denounce him, let us denounce him. All my close friends are watching for me to stumble. Perhaps he can be enticed, and we can prevail against him, and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me like a dread warrior. Therefore my persecutors will stumble, and they will not prevail. They will be greatly shamed, for they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonor will never be forgotten. O Lord of hosts, you test the righteous, you see the heart and the mind. Let me see your retribution upon them, for to you I have committed my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise to the Lord, for he has delivered the life of the needy from the hands of evildoers. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to be God. God.
from Romans. Shall we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin, once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 10th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, you, Lord. Jesus said to the 12, A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetop. Do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground unperceived by your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I will also deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Grace to you and peace in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> it's kind of nice to be up here preaching without, uh, and presiding over service without a gale force wind in our face. So uh, <laughs> I know the musicians appreciate it, uh, for sure. So today, uh, yesterday and today, the summer solstice, the day we have the most sunlight uh, out of the whole year, is that the day when preachers get to preach the longest sermons of the year? No. <laughs> one, we have one, one honest person behind me here also happens to be a pastor. So anyway, no, not really. Even though it's a nice day out so far, what a deal, huh? Uh, we could take a lot the readings in a lot of different directions. We'll, we'll keep it pared down. Just an example, we could explore what a great gospel reading this is for Father's Day, particularly when Jesus came out and said that he came to set a man against his father. Uh, 
What do you think about that? A daughter against her mother? It would be a great one for Mother's Day, too, apparently. Daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. One's foes will be members of one's own household. Those words would be great on the Father's Day card, right? Happy Father's Day, Jesus says, you have to be my mortal enemy now. But this little passage is, why, is kind of why, another example of why it's important not to take parts of the Bible, parts of what Jesus is saying out of context with what the rest of the things he is saying. We know Jesus was not talking absolutely literally here because his words, if taken literally, would violate the whole bunch of the commandments that God gave to the people of Israel, including no less than one of the Ten Commandments. You remember what the Fourth Commandment says, right? Honor your father and mother. So I think it's obvious he was not speaking directly, literally here, but he was using uh, somewhat of a hyperbole, perhaps, to make his point. What point was he trying to make? Well, a friend of mine, uh, another Lutheran pastor named Brad Everett, helped me see the good news of the gospel in this particular reading. One way to describe what Jesus is trying to tell us here is that uh, we remember that old phrase, keep the main thing, the main thing, saying is used during times of upheaval and confusion to try to help everyone involved uh, sort through what's going on and to kind of refocus on what's truly important. We tend to do that particularly during tough times like what we've been through over the past few months in our community, in our country. A reminder to focus, to give thanks on what's really important in our lives. Keeping the main thing the main thing is what Jesus really is doing here in today's gospel. At its essence, the main thing is another one of those Ten Commandments. The very first commandment, you shall have no other gods before me, meaning to love, meaning to trust, meaning to worship God above all things. That's all well and good though, right? Seems easy enough. And no doubt to Jesus' disciples would agree, all of us gathered here this morning, whether in person or online, I would probably, be, probably agree too, right? But life, unfortunately for us, is not lived just on a, as a book on a page or in the abstract. Words can be cheap sometimes. We can give lip service to keeping the main thing the main thing without really doing it sometimes. So what Jesus does here is to give some, the disciples and us 2,000 years later, some real concrete examples of what it means to love and to trust God above all things. All things. Things that might sometimes tempt us to fall away from loving and trusting God. The two examples that Jesus gives us of things that can tempt us can be grouped. Did I just go out here, I think? I don't know. Battery? Uh, still, I think my battery it's just went out. Keep talking. keep talking, they tell me. Test one, two, test, testing. Yeah, I have battery, it's, it shows I'm green here. Maybe, there we go. So the two examples that Jesus gives us of things that can tempt us can also be grouped into two categories. Number one, fear, and number two, family. And doing so, he draws our attention to an important, yet often overlooked fact that anything can be turned into a God. Anything can be uh, used, something that causes us to violate that first commandment. Not just those things that we think of as being bad, but often those things that we think of as being good. A blessing from God, such as family. Jesus reminds us that even our relationships with our family can sometimes prevent us from loving and trusting God above all else. Now, regarding fear, we heard Jesus say again those words that he uses at various times in his ministry. Do not be afraid. He said that to the disciples and by extension again to us, knowing that we face all kinds of fears in our lives, and at least some of those fears are caused by following him. Keeping the main thing the main thing can cause problems. We may be scorned. We may be mocked. Sometimes Christians can even be persecuted, of course. But Jesus promises the disciples and, of course, us that that promise is good for us as well that God will be faithful. God's faithfulness will help us to avoid giving in to our fears, forgetting about all of those things that God has called us to do. So that first part of Jesus' message is encouraging. Do not be afraid to proclaim God's message. 
like Jeremiah did in today's first reading, or be a follower of Christ, as we heard St. Paul say in that second reading from Romans. Second half of today's gospel reading, though, hits the disciples and us literally close to home, though. Here, Jesus' message was not about being afraid in the face of enemies, but about not being afraid in the face of family. First of all, it's clear that the entire message of the Bible, taken into context, takes, tells us that our families are supposed to be blessings from God, and hopefully most of the time they are. But sin can be so insidious that sometimes it can even twist the blessings of God into something that can turn us away from God. How can that happen? I think Jesus is talking about how sometimes loved ones, for what they might think might be good reasons, try to talk another out of the, going down the path that God has called them to go. It's pretty likely that Jesus' disciples had that thing happen to them. They had problems with their own families because of what Jesus had called them to do. After all, remember, some, several of them were fishermen, going in their family business, minding their own business, but then just dropped their nets to follow him. All that time spent following Jesus was time taken away from their jobs that earned them a living for themselves and their family. So it had only been natural for their parents, for example, to think that they had gone crazy. Even worse, since Jesus was stirring up the anger of the local authorities, they risked bringing the wrath down upon their families as well. Life just would have been a lot easier if they would have stayed home and kept fishing. So Jesus recognized the potential for our relationships, even those relationships as important to us as our family, to get in the way sometimes of what God has called us to do. There aren't any loopholes in that first commandment. No, thou shall have no other gods unless, or thou shall have no other gods except, just no other gods before me, period. We are to have no other gods because they're is no other God than the one who created us, no other God than the one who redeems us, no other God than the one who sustains us, particularly during times like these. There is no other God than the one in whom we find forgiveness and new life. There is no other God than the one who so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have life. And so Jesus calls his disciples and us to remember to keep the main thing, the main thing. We are to have no other gods. We are to fear, love, and trust God above all things. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.
confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. O oh God, you bring diverse voices together to form your church. Open our hearts and unstop our ears to learn from one another, that differences might not overshadow shadow our baptismal unity. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God, your creation shows us that life comes from death. Renew the land, air, and waterways, and direct the work of all who care for your creation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O God, you promise to be with all who are persecuted for your sake. Guide all who speak your word of justice, and console any who are tormented to targeted for being who they are. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God, you are with us, and we are never alone. Bless all fathers and father figures who strive to love and nurture, nurture as you do. Comfort all who long to be fathers, and all for whom this day is difficult. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God, our healer, we name all the cares and concerns of our hearts before you now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, you bless us with guides and caretakers in the faith. As we give thanks for those who have died, Increase our care for one another until we walk with them in newness of life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please uh, share a sign, sign of peace with those around you, a wave or, or whatever you uh, want to do there. Just a few uh, words here while uh, uh, Pastor Dell is getting ready. Uh, just some thank yous to, again, all, to all the musicians and everybody who uh, helped put the, make this service possible. Uh, the, alt, the altar, portable altar here, which is normally in our chapel, uh, has been a gift to us some time ago from the Wingard family. It was an uh, altar used by uh, Frank's grandfather, uh, who is a minister. And these uh, uh, green pyramids uh, we have here are our gift from, to us from Pastor Jerry Crow. I uh, remember Pastor Jerry, he's uh, living up in Minnesota now, but worship with us uh, for a few years. So let us pray our offertory prayer. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, maker of all things. Through your goodness you have blessed us with these gifts. 
With them we offer ourselves to your service and dedicate our lives to the care and redemption all that you have made. For the sake of him who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all the drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and the blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Again, uh, we'll come around to each vehicle. I will uh, intake the uh, way for the body of Christ uh, into the chalice held by Pastor Dell, and uh, we'll have communion along with our uh, communion hymns being sung uh, by our worship team.
body and blood of our... May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth food from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts toward those who hunger in any way, that all may know your care. And prepare us now to feast on the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our sending hymn is, I Love to Tell the Story, 661. serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.
Thanks everybody, enjoy the day.